is there a minister in the house? Is there a minister in the house? They always open up with prayer and the pledge, so uh, I always like to do that in respect to the ministry. If not, we're going to make uh, uh, Administrator Woody Wilson the minister today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, going to ask, uh, where is my... Where is my good friend with the bets on wheels? Going to a moment, ask Donis to do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. So at this time, I'd like to call this uh, Cattle Parish Commission Veterans Affairs News Conference to order. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Woodrow Wilson, Parish Administrator, who will lead us in the invocation, and Mr. Donis O'Brien, if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we will get into our program. <coughs> Appreciate it. I'll let us all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful occasion. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercies that's been renewed for us this day. We thank you for your untiring and undying love that you have for us in all of humanity, that you send the Son of Lord Jesus Christ to die on Calvary's cross for our sins. We thank you, Father God, for such love that, that only you can possess for us, and we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord God, as we take time to reflect on our veterans and the things and the commitment they've had to our country and, and the things that our local government and state government and local agencies are doing on behalf of our veterans. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing this work to go forward. We as veterans, we appreciate all of the, the kindness and the acts of generosity that's been restored upon us, Lord God, by our, the people that we serve throughout America. We thank you, Lord God, that you continue to bless everyone's effort, particularly as we go forward. And as our troops come back home, Lord God, those who are injured, we pray that you will heal their bodies. And we pray for the families who, who lost loved ones during the conflicts, the various conflicts throughout history. We pray, Lord God, that you will please pull the voids in their hearts that have been created by the home of their loved ones. Father God, we pray that you will be pleased today as our efforts continue to unfold as we honor our veterans. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Y'all may be seated. At this time, I would like for Commission President of 2012, Commissioner Mike Thibodeau, if he would come forward and offer us some words of welcome. And after him, Mr. Um, Woody Wilson, our parish administrator. I want to welcome everyone here today. You know, it's most of the time on a press conference, it's uh, unusual to have more people than there are media. And uh, today, uh, the vets is probably one of the groups that they turn out. And if Ken Epperson is in charge, he would be sure they'll turn out. So he, uh, I'm glad to see this many people here. Uh, because this is a very important part of our community. Uh, I want to say, and I want to be very brief, and just say first of all, I want to thank everybody that's involved in this uh, celebration that will be taking place. I especially want to thank Commissioner Ken Epperson for his leadership and his ability to, uh, to get into this thing and make it as big as, and as good as it's going to be. So uh, welcome, glad to see so many people here. and. Uh, hoping that this celebration, this parade, turns out to be one of the biggest things that's happened in Ghetto Parish. Thank you. Thank you. Administrator, Mr. Woody Wilson. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, press, fellow veterans, staff. Thank you all for being here this morning. It's certainly an honor for me to stand before you all and welcome you here today, particularly as a veteran. 25 years of Air Force service, I, I really appreciate all what's being done on our behalf. Uh, last April, under the leadership of Commissioner Ken Epperson Sr., we launched a program called uh, Honoring the Veterans and Their Family through the National Association of County Officials. And it was really a grand occasion all year that we emphasized veterans and their family. And Commissioner Epperson has done a great job in highlighting this. And I certainly my hats off to him as well as those legislators throughout the state who have enacted various things that you hear about this morning on behalf of the veterans. And I really do appreciate the commission and the position that they have taken to uh, lead in this area, in our community, 
and to not only uh, let us know how they feel about the veterans, but encourage others to give back as well. So on, on behalf of the Cal Parish Administration, I would welcome you here, and the veterans, uh, get as much information as you can. That's why we're here today, and particularly uh, information about the forthcoming parade that will be coming forth in this uh, November. And thank you for being here. This time I'd like to call Mr. David Lassert, Deputy Secretary and Executive Counsel of the Louisiana Department of Veterans Affairs in Baton Rouge. We're glad that he has an opportunity to come today with us and share with us the legislative actions that transpired in the past uh, upcoming legislative session. Mr. David Lassert. Well, thank you, Ken. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm always happy to be up here in Northwest Louisiana, and especially when the Cattle Parish Commission invites me to speak, and they get a strong turnout of veterans, and it's always something that's a pleasure to see. Um, down in Baton Rouge, we've been working hard for our veterans. In this past legislative session, it's probably one of the most active that uh, our veterans' uh, package has ever been. Uh, I brought a few handouts today for uh, everyone to take home and kind of educate your folks and your posts, and uh, go back and see your, uh, your VFW Legion posts, your DAV posts, and, and share the news as to what's new and what's available to them. I'm just going to touch real briefly on a couple small things. Uh, first and foremost, your congressional delegation, your legislative delegation here in Northwest Louisiana has been the most supportive in the state. Uh, Representative Henry Burns, Rep uh, Senator Robert Adley have sponsored several of our pieces of legislation. And of course, we have Barbara Norton in the crowd who has voted uh, favorably on every one of them. So I would like to give Barbara Norton a round of applause here first. Thank you. I'm, like I said, I'm just going to touch real briefly on a few of them. Our first piece of legislation is called the Driver's License Indicator. It's going to be a, a little insignia on the Louisiana Driver's License, which will allow the veteran to opt to show that veteran status on his driver's license. And why it matters to the veteran is that it allows him for an easy way to identify himself as a veteran for purposes of retail discounts. Now, for the most people, they'll say, why isn't a VA ID card sufficient? Well, most people don't have VA ID cards. So individuals aren't going to be able to recognize that. If they don't have a VA ID card, you're going to have to show the clerk a DD-214 or an equivalent, and they'll look like you're showing them something written in Japanese if you do that. So I highly recommend not to do it. So this is going to, first and foremost, give the veteran avenue to show his veteran status, get those veterans discounts at Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, et cetera. Secondly, it's going to give the Louisiana Department of Veterans Affairs a good numerical count on the veterans we have in Louisiana. Most people don't realize, but we don't have an accurate number of individuals who are veterans in any given geographic area. Uh, the VA relies on an algorithm called VET, VETPOP 2007 that's uh, from about yay to the floor with different mathematic equations which shows which any given uh, area has a veteran population. This is going to give us a little bit better way to track that. It was a suggestion from the Louisiana Legislative Auditor, and it's a suggestion we took to heart. We're going to show that uh, maybe there's a better way of doing those sorts of things. Uh, another uh, benefit from this piece of legislation is a very somber reminder that a lot of indigent veterans out there uh, are being held by coroners without any way for them to identify them as being eligible for burial in our veteran cemeteries. It's an issue that we've taken hard down to Bad Rouge. We've sent letters to every corner in the parish asking if there is any unidentified vet remains in their uh, vicinity that they contact us and we see if they're eligible for uh, burial in our veteran cemeteries. Most, re most close up here is our veteran cemetery in Keithville, Louisiana, which is a beautiful facility. And if you all haven't been out there, I encourage you to take a trip. You can be in awe of uh, how beauty, the beauty and the, and the somber reminder of those veterans which have uh, passed along the way. Another, uh, another benefit from this piece of legislation is some states which have adopted this, which uh, have required their local police departments and their state police to do special training to recognize uh, certain triggers for folks returning from conflict. Sometimes uh, there's unnecessary uh, aggression shown inadvertently by a police officer, which may trigger a response from a certain veteran who's recently returned from conflict. And this piece of legislation will allow those officers to identify folks as veterans and uh, treat them as such. These individuals have received special training and are trained to react in a certain way. And, uh, it's in the best interest of the local uh, law enforcement and the veteran that uh, the individual is uh, recognized for that training. So that's one small piece, uh, a major cog in the wheel of our legislative package. Uh, and uh, Senator Adley and Representative Burns sponsored that for us. So if you see those folks, be sure to thank them. 
Secondly, uh, we have a lot of education bills. Uh, one education bill leans on in-state tuition status for veterans. Previously, veterans that were stationed out of state were not afforded in-state tuition. Thanks to House Bill 485 by Representative LaRusso, uh, that's no longer the case. Those vet veterans are going to get in-state tuition status, so they're not going to have to pay out-of-pocket in addition to using their GI Bill benefits. It's going to be a big boost, especially on the borders uh, like for schools like LSUS up here in Shreveport. Um, secondly, Representative, Representative LaRusso also sponsored House Bill 631. House Bill 631 closed the TOPS loophole. Uh, some veterans weren't afforded the opportunity to use their TOPS if they re-enlisted. Uh, Louisiana Office of Financial Assistance deemed that as a voluntary act which disqualified them from using their TOPS benefits. That was a, it was a travesty and that loophole has been changed. So now our veterans are going to be able to uh, possibly defer use of their GI Bill to get a graduate degree and use their Louisiana TOPS if they're eligible to get their undergraduate degree. So that's another great change. Senate Bill 337 deals with taxes. It's a constitutional amendment which is going to be on the ballot coming up which allows local parish governments to extend the homestead exemption which was passed last session. <coughs> now this individual bill allows for spouses to also seek the homestead exemption if their spouse passed away prior to them being eligible for the homestead exemption. A lot of times those folks are under financial hardship because their loved one recently passed most of the time, that's the breadwinner in their family. This, uh, this enables that military spouse to get a small tax break if the parish so desires uh, shortly after uh, their spouse had passed. Now, the, 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 crown jewel, the crown jewel of our legislative package this session dealt with uh, employment professional certifications. Uh, there's, there was a, a, a bill authored by Representative Henry Burns which is going to require all professional occupational licensing boards to recognize veteran training when dealing with certifications for their profession. So for example, if an individual comes back from the Army or the Marine Corps with certification as a corpsman or a medic, that individual is going to be recognized for that training if he wants to seek employment as an EMT. That individual was uh, worked on a ship doing a certain number of tasks. That individual will be recognized for that training. Currently, there's a, a really convoluted system we have in Louisiana for our boards of commissions that you really uh, it's hard to do an across the board law like this and we're going to put it on the individual boards and commissions to, cr to create administrative procedure act rules which are going to put this uh, language to task and we didn't stop there though because there's another important component especially up here with Barksdale uh, and that's the military spouses many times when an individual is transferred from his duty station from another state their wife is asked to pick up their career and make sacrifices and come over to Louisiana. A lot of times, those licensing requirements of those individuals are professionals are not going to allow them to immediately practice their profession. It's going to create a financial hardship on the family. This bill also allows for a temporary license for those military spouses, and it also allows for a transfer of their license from another state. So it's going to allow an ease uh, in transition from military members and their families from other states to move to Louisiana. And I can't tell you how important that is for a place uh, that's this uh, uh, close in proximity to Barksdale Air Force Base. That's going to mean a lot to those families right across the river. Uh, another piece, major piece of legislation, we tweaked our Military Family Assistance Fund. And if you don't know about the Military Family Assistance Fund, it's a fund created that's funded by taxpayers who donate on their tax returns. Uh, it's one of those little check boxes you see amongst others that say, do you want to donate a buck when you file your taxes? Uh, and that fund is in existence to help guardsmen and reservists when you call to active duty and incur financial hardships. Currently, the language, well, previously, the language was a little bit too strenuous and created a little bit too much of a hardship on those uh, military family members. And this bill eases that transition. So it's going to allow more folks to get the relief that they need when they need it. One more bill by, what was it, House Bill 507 uh, tweaked the Louisiana Veteran Business Initiative which allows for veterans to receive preference on contracts for state procurement. Uh, it allows for the veteran-owned the veteran business to be a little bit larger and still retain the benefits. And if you don't know about that, uh, there's a number of Louisiana procurement uh, technical counselors in the state of Louisiana. And if you're a veteran-owned business, then it's definitely something that's worthwhile you should get on board with. The last act was the created the Military Advisory Council. It was House Bill 936. 
And previously there was a Governor's Military Advisory Board which did the same function. The problem was the Governor's Military Advisory Board was comprised of a lot of active duty individuals who were a little bit apprehensive about getting involved with an economic development board. Now nobody in the state of Louisiana knows better than Clarksdale uh, about the importance of the economy and how the military and veterans relates to that. This, uh, this individual board is going to allow for a lot of the recently separated stakeholders to step in the shoes of those individuals and identify and recognize the economic impact and kind of sell it to the rest of the state of Louisiana and nationally. So with that in mind, we also have our newest compensation and pension figures which have been released for the Caddo closure area. Now I don't want to steal our back's thunder. I know he's going to come up here in a little bit. Where are you at? I'm not going to get too deep into it. But uh, Nash, well, this past year we have seen a huge increase in our compensation and pension dollars. We're poised to breach that $1 billion a year mark just in compensation and pension alone to our Louisiana veterans. And it's, it's a number that's gone up drastically over the past several years. Uh, we've been doing a lot of different things to increase our, the, the money in the veterans' pockets, uh, which brings that number up. We've increased our training. We've increased our veterans and service counselors. We've given them more resources. We've given them additional office equipment. And that's really paid dividends to the veterans who have received these benefits and rely on them for their day-to-day -day, uh, subsidence. Uh, it's a number that has swelled to $140 million for Caddo Parish alone annually. And it's something we're really proud of. And if you see your back today, I want you to give him a handshake and thank you for that because it's because of his hard work that those veterans are getting the benefits that they deserve. So with that, I think that I think that sums up our legislation. I know things up here in Northwest Louisiana are going great for our veterans. Our uh, cemetery in Keithville has never been better. Our home in Bossier City has never been better with staffing, with budget. Uh, recently received a four-star rating, which is an impeccable uh, rating for a veteran's home. Uh, I know we're all very proud of it. And uh, if you have any questions for me today, uh, just go to me, and I'll be happy to answer them. That's what I mean right now, but yes, Colonel Posner. A lot of good information, but I publish a newspaper with 10,000 people who would like to have a copy of your speech so I can put it into my newspaper so that it can get out to many other people. So we can take I'll be honored. Card, please. And, uh, thank, thank you, Colonel. Thank you, you to retirees. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we have an extensive agenda. We're going to go through with our presenters and then probably at the end because we know there are questions, so write them down. You can sort of break out and get those individuals that you'd like to further <coughs> question them. Uh, also, would like you to know that we are recording this uh, today and it will be on our website. You can even pardon cattle, uh, www.cattle.org. You can uh, pick up this entire press conference today. At this time, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Representative House District 3, Representative Barbara Norton. She has a resolution in reference to veterans that was enacted this year in the legislature. Representative Norton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It is indeed a great opportunity to be here today on behalf of the veterans throughout the state of Louisiana. I bring you greetings on behalf of the House of Representatives with um, Act Number 58. In Act Number 58, let me beg up just a minute or two to tell you about Act Number 58. I had the opportunity, the great opportunity, to work with um, my colleague on the commission, Commissioner Everson, on behalf of this resolution to make sure that our veterans was recognized. And he thought, as well as I and maybe several other of my colleagues, thought it would be a great opportunity to put this resolution together. This is a concur resolution. It is on behalf of the House and the Senate. And I, again, like to thank my colleague here, Commissioner Epperson. Would you please give him a hand for his credentials? <laughs> not only that, but he came down in this session for two weeks to be a part of our session and to work with us and 
to get involved in the, the, the daily run of the House of Representatives and to make sure that those things that were happening that we could work together on, that we made sure that we put forth a great effort, not only for the city of Shreveport, but also for the state of Louisiana. And again, I just thank him so much for his understanding of going through the one of the interesting sessions that we've ever had, I believe. And he was there with the ups and the downs. But at the end of the day, we were able to bring out this resolution, number 58. And I'm so thankful and honored and happy to be serving with many great men and women in the House of Representatives who agreed that this was something that we needed to do in order to say to our military people and to our veterans and to our sailors and our soldiers and to Marines and to everyone how much we really, really do appreciate all of their efforts and all of their sacrifice. And what this resolution would do is it takes the opportunity to say how much we really do appreciate you all, number one. And number two, it, it requests to act for the legislature to place on their website, those on their website, those great things and those, those wonderful things that our men and women has done as veterans throughout the state of Louisiana and to say to them that we appreciate you. I don't think there's ever been a resolution that comes through the House or the Senate that give us a request, the legislature, to make sure that we put on the website those wonderful things that our veterans has done throughout the state of Louisiana. And I want to say today, this resolution saying on behalf of all veterans, and we say to you that you've done such a great job, your sacrifice, we cannot tell you how much we really appreciate your sacrifice. So again, number 58 is the resolution. And if there are any other questions or anything that you all would like to see placed on that website for the state of Louisiana, please don't hesitate to give me a call or contact my office, and we'll make sure that we get that done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative Norton. Before I go any further, I would like to make sure that it's understood that not only the Cattle Parish Commission uh, is and, and other organizations are going along in this venture, the city of Shreveport is a great player. The uh, police department, the fire department, the mayor's office, uh, are there any city of Shreveport representatives here today? I think they have city council meeting today, but they're, 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 they're pretty busy. But the city of Shreveport, we have people from Bossier, uh, from everywhere that's participating. This isn't only a cattle parish commission effort. This is a joint effort by uh, Bossier Parish, Bossier City, Cattle Parish, Shreveport, and also all our veterans organizations on both sides of the river. And then so in some instances, we have friends from the Soto Parish, Webster Parish, that are helping also. So I wanted to make sure that uh, I inform everyone of that effort. At this time, uh, we'd like for, we have the Veterans for Veterans, um, State President, Mr. Donis O'Brien, if he would come up and give us some information and status update as to an event that has been going on consistently that will be happening uh, this year in November. Veterans for Veterans started in, uh, actually started in 2005. The man standing back there with a vest on like me, he's the one that actually started it, Mr. Mark Galloway. He started it when he was working at the VA hospital. It was designed to help guys to come in to the VA that didn't have their necessary items, toothpaste and that stuff, and they were gathering it up, putting it in Ziploc bags and giving it out to those people for free through volunteer services. Later on, it grew into what it is now. This will be the eighth year. Uh, last year, we raised close to $20,000, and we used part of that uh, the year before to buy a a van with the DAV to help them uh, go to Texas County and pick up veterans and bring it back. We have furnished two I know of uh, waiting rooms up there at the VA for the, for the patient's families to sit in. Uh, we've also give the veterans home a 55 inch color TV to go in their lobby so they'd have something to watch and you know, big enough they could enjoy it. So the organization starts out on Saturday morning we, we, well, actually, we start Friday, but the event starts Saturday morning, 9 o'clock, at the old Hamels Park. It's called River Park Church now. And we have, it's, it's called, that's for vets, 
motorcycle event. It started as a totally motorcycle event. Now we have Barksdale participating and car shows and everything else that's getting involved with it. And every bit of the money that we raise goes into a fund. It's a legal organization. It's chartered, franchised, everything. And we help the VA hospital. We help through volunteer services. We help the veterans' homes through Jim Adams and the people over there. And we help the, the uh, cemetery with their stuff. We just changed our charter to take those three on. This year our goal is to try to raise enough money to put a huge storage building out there for wreaths across America so we can store all the wreaths on property. Now we're having to store them in a lady's garage. So we want to give her a garage back. You know, uh, the event goes till 5 o'clock. There's food, there's music all day, and it's not just for bikers. Anybody that wants to come and help a veteran can come. And I want to thank Rep. Ken here. Uh, when we first started, we've been doing it on the same, pretty much the same day every year for eight years. We found out that they had picked the same day that we had our event. We got in touch with him, and it didn't take two minutes. We had that all straightened out, and now we're going to participate in the 11th parade, and he's going to participate in the 10th parade. So, uh, great minds can get it done, right? All right. <laughs> we want y'all to come see us. Thank you. And what's that day? Before I go any further, I, I made a little slip up there, you know, I'm over 21. <laughs> uh, uh, I got to recognize Mr. Barry Robertson, our cattle uh, veteran service uh, officer. And also, I think I see, uh, do I see Bob Peterson now? Yeah. Bob, yeah. glad to see you, man. <laughs> Barry, come forward. Uh, there are others that are involved here also in this effort. We'd like to recognize Senator Mary Landry's office. Senator David Bitter's office, Congressman John Fleming's office. As I stated, this is an effort that has no boundaries or political subdivision. We have one thing in mind, and that's what's in the best interest of our military and our veterans and their families. At this time, uh, Mr. Uh, Barry Robinson, our new Cattle Veteran Service Officer, Mr. Cattle Veteran. Thank you, Mr. Episode. Good morning, everybody. As I said, my name is Barry Robinson. I'm working with the Louisiana Department of Veteran Affairs Cattle Care Service Officer. We, um, Ms. Elaine Carson is a secretary of the Louisiana Department of Veteran Affairs who is a cabinet member of our government agenda. I would like to also recognize Mike Richardson back here who is the regional manager, the Northwest Regional Manager, and Bob Petrus who is the Cattle Parish office supervisor. I just want to take a moment here and say one thing about Bob. He had had some tremendous challenges over the last few months, from the loss of his wife almost to the loss of himself. But thanks be to God, he is back, he's up, he's walking, mm -hmm. and he probably, doctor probably would have told him not to come out here, but he's here anyway. You know, we as veterans, we dedicate ourselves to helping others from the time that we go into the service and even into our later years. And some of us, we get there. But um, our office is located at 1031 Cresswell, right next door to the health unit. Our primary focus is to assist veterans and their families. We are staff by the Louisiana Department of Veteran Affairs Assistant Counselors. We are trained and certified for the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. We are a state agency, but we assist in preparing claims for compensation and pension as well. We assist veterans with all aspects of their federal and state benefits. The Cattle Parish Commission and the City of Shreveport jointly fund us at the rate of 25% of our operating budget. The Cattle Parish Commission has furnished us with an office space we now use. And I must say, it is one of the nicest offices in the state. Nothing against bad rooms, but we do have a nice office. <laughs> but we do appreciate it. Uh, the Commission has shown its undying support for our needs to service the veterans in this community. 
Caddo Perry has the fourth largest veteran population in the state. And right next door to us is Bolshier. Now, Caddo Parish is the home of more than 20,000 veterans. This office is extremely busy. Once a month, we uh, have some 1,111 office visits and phone calls. We process over 300 compensation and pension claims. We also support the Mayor's Work Study Program by using one of the students in our office daily. And we also support other work study programs throughout the city. During the fiscal year of 2011, we are very proud to say that we were an integral part in preparing claims for veterans and their families, which amounted to over $63 million in direct pay. This is a little referred to the 163 million, but we could help contribute to 163 million in direct pay to the veterans. That's a lot of money in this community. A lot of help, a lot of assistance, which is well needed. Now, the state has done a tremendous job in supporting the veterans in all aspects. Now, the Kettle Parish, we increased from 53 million to 63 million over the last couple of years. So that tells you there by itself that the vet population is climbing. The need is climbing as well. We have several different programs. He spoke about the tax exemption program, the education system program. We help a lot of veterans. One of the newest programs that had just come about is what we call VRAP, that's V-R-A-P. I passed some stuff out at the last commission meeting. This targets a specific age group, veterans between the age of 35 and 60. So what we are trying to do is help those people continue to be an integral part of our community. There, uh, there's other qualifying uh, criteria that need to be met in, in reference to this program, but it is there, and it's available, and it's well needed. But I would just like to say, since I've been in this job, it has been a tremendous help to know that we have all the support that we need from the City of Shreveport, from the Parish Commission, from the State Office, whatever we need, all we have to do is call. And all, all we ask you, as veterans to do, whatever you need, call or stop by. Thank you. Thank you, Barry, and we appreciate uh, that information. At this time, I want to do a little housekeeping before I proceed with the program. Uh, many of you may be aware that Mr. John Petaway who attained the age of 101 on June the 4th of this year. Uh, we contacted Mike Richardson and, the, and the, the State Department to find out whether Mr. John Petaway was the oldest living veteran in the state of Louisiana, which at this point in time, we can't find anyone else that's older. <laughs> he was born June the 4th, 1911. He entered the uh, military in World War II. He got drafted in August of 1942 until September of 1945. Uh, he resides uh, on Dawson Road, a uh, very spry gentleman, uh, a few health issues, but, but he's still here. So we are currently still researching. It's a possibility that he may be the oldest World War II living veteran in the United States, not only the state of Louisiana. So we want to make sure that we recognize that. Also, he had some issues. Um, in addition to that, he and his wife was married on the 19th of June, 70 years. In addition to that, on the 24th of June, his lovely wife, Miss Alzada, turned 99 years of age. So it's a lot of things that's going on in the Petaway household in terms of longevity. And he had some issues around the house that we made mention. I don't know what organization helped him out, but they may be present here. He needed some uh, handicap access ramps at his home. So they called and told me that uh, 
a veterans group and some old volunteers that came and put one up. However, we still, we still need another one. He still like to get on his walk and go out in the yard and look at his pecan trees and, 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 and walk out in the yard for us. So we're making this appeal today. If there's anyone that would like to do that second handicap round uh, for Mr. John Petterway, please contact me and we can get together and go forward. Also, I received a letter on Saturday from the President of the United States of America, President Barack Obama, recognizing Mr. Petterway's 101st birthday in June, also uh, his, act, his uh, accomplishments as a veteran. And at this time, I would like to present this letter to Mr. Petterway's son-in-law, Mr. Isaac Talbot. Second piece of housekeeping, some of you may have heard on June the 22nd in Washington, D.C. at the Capitol, there was a ceremony that was held by Speaker Bar uh, Bar Barna, Barna, I forget how it, Barna, and, uh, and Senate Leader uh, Reed. They bestowed the Congressional Gold Medal of Honor upon uh, Marines that was called the Montfort Point. Marines. That was in the early stages of World War II when the President stated that the Marine Corps could draft and enlist African American citizens. They trained at Camp Lejeune in a different area of Camp Lejeune because the units were segregated within that time. During the history of that Montford Point uh, directive, there were over 19,000 African-American Marines that were drafted and volunteered for the Marine Corps and trained at that facility. To this date, there are, I think, 470 that are still living. 320 went to Washington, D.C. on the 27th and received their Congressional uh, Gold Medal of Honor. And Cattle Parish in the city of Shreveport is honored to have one of those Montford Point Marines that was honored, and that's no honor to Mr. Cleotha Sanders. Mr. Sanders, Mr. Sanders. chair of our parade and program committee of this effort. Ms. Linda Clements. Good morning. I am thrilled that there are so many people here in support of our veterans. It just warms my heart. And Ken, it's one more piece of proof that how Shreveport Bossier feels about our veterans. Um, I want to just take a minute to introduce the members of our committee because it takes a, a host of people to put together a parade. And if you are here today, please stand up and remain standing. Randy Lucky, Ronnie Hammond, Joanna Hensley, Ginger Hartman, Jan Elkins, and Colonel Steve DePeisler. Would you give them a hand? It is our intent to give Shreveport Bossier veterans the day of their lives, the biggest parade in the Arklatex, and we need all your help in getting out this information to them. Um, it's going to begin at um, the fire station out at uh, Fairgrounds Field and will continue down to Hirsch. And I know you think that's probably a short route, but many of our veterans that are going to be with us are elderly and we wanted to keep it short so that uh, it would be good for them. The um, Shreveport Fire Department is giving us their huge three-story flag, and we thought that would be a fitting entrance for our parade. So that will be at the very beginning of the parade, and we're really excited about having that. Colonel DePeisler, as you know, is the walking encyclopedia of knowledge for anything military, and he has been a tremendous help to me to try to find everything we can get to put in the parade. We're hoping to have the bagpipes lead us off, 
the Louisiana bagpipes, and so we thought that would be really cool to have them at the beginning. And one of our goals is to get the youth involved. We want this to be for everybody. And so we've invited the ROTCs from all of Bossier and all of Caddo, and they've all accepted. So we're really excited about that. Uh, Bird High School Band is going to be there, Fair Park High School Band, and I've invited two Bossier High School Bands, and I've not heard back from them, but I'm sure I will. The um, Chris out at the State Fairgrounds has been kind enough to loan us three of those huge people movers, and we want to fill those with veterans. So if you know veterans who would like to ride in the parade and who are not able to walk in the parade, we want them. We want their names so that we can get them there. Uh, Red River Chevrolet is giving us three big trucks with hitches and drivers, so I, I'm, I'm thankful to them for, for helping us do that also. Um, Colonel DePeisler is inviting all three commanders from Barksdale, so we're helping to have them there, as well as some marching units and the uh, color guard from Barksdale. We certainly want everybody from Barksdale that we can get there. Um, we're also having all 50 state flags, the specialty flags, the uh, Purple Heart flag and the um, which other one? Yes, POWMIA flags will be there also. Both mayors are 100% behind this and they're going to ride in the parades too, so we're really proud for that. The El Caruba Temple is going to bring their little miniature cars and all their clown units because we wanted to have children there. We think that's really important because when sometimes I'm a former teacher and when I would ask teenagers how they felt about patriotism, it's almost like they, it's a passe word. And we want to pass it down to our youngest, to all of our generations that it is not. It is something we feel and it comes from our heart. We're hoping to involve Bossier and Caddo Sheriff Departments. We've invited them. Um, we're going to have the American Legion, the Reserve Units, Camp Minden, the Louisiana National Guard, Fort Polk. Um, it'd be great if we could have some of those band floats from the Mardi Gras that might throw red, white, and blue throws for the children also, so we, we're going to invite them. All of our state representatives and um, congressmen and senators have been invited to attend, so if you know one of them, put a little pressure on them. We want them to be there too. We're going to, at the end of the parade, we're going to have an inside uh, short program at Hirsch. We'll have some live patriotic music. This is just kind of in the beginning stages of our planning right now, so uh, it will evolve over time. At that program, we're going to honor several people, several veterans and people who have been very special to our veterans, and especially uh, the 101-year-old, we hope he will be there with us, and, and maybe the the veteran who's the most decorated, and we'll have some special certificates for them at that time. Um, let's see if I can think of anything else. The conclusion to our parade is important, so we hope you will support that. It's not going to be long, it will be brief, and it will be something that will just be befitting to all of our veterans. So if you can help us get the word out, that would be wonderful, and we want as many veterans there as we can get there. Thank you very much. And as the old info commercials go, and that ain't all. Uh, Chris, Chris Giordano with the State Fair of Louisiana. Is Chris, okay, yeah, Chris, if you saw that. Okay, thank you. Well, on behalf of the State Fair of Louisiana's Board of Directors, I'd like to say that we're very honored to be called on by Commissioner Epperson to, to join the community effort. Uh, this is a community-wide effort. Bossier Parish, Caddo Parish, Northwest Louisiana. Uh, of course, going out of the parishes and out of the area, I understand that we have some folks in Fort Polk that will be attending, but we're very honored to be called on to join in this effort as we recognize and honor our veterans, and not only our veterans, but our active military as well. And so the State Fair today is proud to announce that on Sunday, November the 11th, 2012, at the State Fair of Louisiana, we are declaring that Veterans and Military Appreciation Day. Uh, as Linda just said, we have a parade plan, some programming plan. Not only the activities involved with celebrating our veterans that day, but all of the other items that you typically would find at the State Fair, such as the circus, the zoo, uh, the pig races, and. The list goes on and on and on of the free activities that take place during the fair that you don't have to reach in your pocket for. And even on a brighter note, 
uh, in honor of our military on that day, we're going to have free admission for all military, veterans, active, retired, and not only uh, those men and women that serve our country, but their spouses and their dependents as well. Any Any form of military identification will be accepted both for free parking and for free gate admission. It doesn't matter what type of ID it is. If you can prove in any way, shape, or form that you've served this country, then you're coming to the fair on us that day. And we're, we're going to be proud to be a part of this. Uh, another special attraction that we're bringing into the fair this year is a living soldier statue. And uh, this living soldier statue will be prominently displayed out in the middle of the midway. Uh, for our Veterans Day celebration. So once again, thank all of you. Uh, there's a lot of people involved in putting this together, and uh, it's, it's a tremendous effort. We, we're just very honored to be a part of it, and the Veterans Day happens to be the last day of the State Fair. So bring the entire family out. You will have a wonderful time, great programming, and uh, we need to really stand up and support our, our military men and women. Thank you. see that this is still a work in progress. There is still room for others to participate. I'd like to make this announcement for you to put in your iPad or whatever. On July the 27th at 11 o'clock a.m., our next meeting of the Parade and Honor Ceremony Committee will be held at the State Fair uh, around, what's that address? Uh, 3701 Hudson Avenue. 3701 Hudson Avenue. State Fair Bounds off. That way we're going to go out there. We can actually physically look over things and we're steady putting everything in place. Some other things that we have in effect, we've got a program committee that's in place. We're going to do a program. We're going to be coming to the uh, business community to ask them for support. We have a nice book that will be put together. Uh, we also are going to uh, we have a communications co uh, committee together that are working on some things. I'm going to ask that the Bossier Parish, as well as Bossier City, Shreveport uh, City, and Caddo Parish and surrounding areas declare the week of November the 5th through the 11th, 2012 as Military and Veterans Honor Week. We're going to take that entire week. We're not just going to look at that one day. We're going to make that a big event, and the program committee has some other good things in mind that they're going to bring forward as we... Uh, going down the line putting this in place. Uh, another thing that I would like to mention is you all familiar with the Northwest Louisiana Veterans Home. You know that's here. The Northwest Louisiana Cemetery. Our new veteran service office. Not only within Caddo Parish, but basically it's a constitutional provision that parishes and city governments will provide those places. You all may remember in 2011 when I think HB1 and SB1 was contemplating cutting funding for veteran cemeteries, Northwest Louisiana Veterans Homes, and veteran service offices. And we, as veterans, got together once we heard that and we sounded the alarm. That's why we are here today. There are two things that are taking place that are significant, not only locally but nationally. The Cattle Parish Commission are members of the National Association of Counties. Last year we started a military and veterans task force. That has escalated into this year we're going to vote on make, making that a standing committee. Some of you may remember when we had the base closure acts in the latter part of the 90s. We were called flat-footed. Some communities were decimated when those closings came into play. We don't intend for that to happen this time. Just for the record, there are, within the next five years, there will be one million veterans returning from military service back to civilian life. And we want to be proactive and we want to be ready so we can absorb those. There are still uh, active veteran bases and military posts, Fort Polk, Boxdale Air Base. We have to coalesce with these organizations, these military organizations, and make them feel that they are a, an integral part of this community. And we know they are economically. You heard the figures that was given out. We are not going to have our veterans recognition as being a program. 
We want recognition of our military veterans and our, uh, uh, and our active military to be a philosophy of all of our governments. The Police Jury Association, which all 30, 64 parishes in Louisiana are members of, this year in, in February 2013, we are going to vote on a standing committee of military and veteran services. So therefore, we will always make sure that we have a constant philosophy on recognizing our military and our veterans. It will not be a program. So at this time, I would like to thank all of you for coming out today. And I appreciate your patience, but so many people have been calling us, what are you doing, why are you doing this? And we didn't want to just get little snippets out. We wanted to come together as a cohesive unit and let everyone know where we are at this point in time in a unified effort. So that way, we'll know where to move forward from in the future. And as I close, I'd like to ask all eligible active military persons, reserve personnel, younger people that have been recently discharged from the military, please join a post in the American Legion post, a VFW post, or some organization. These posts are gray and significant now, and we need younger blood in those organizations where we can keep up with the current events and the things that are going to be transpiring as they relate to our military and our veterans in the future. Uh, Commissioner Thibodeau, I, I think, the, and a lot of you may have given me too much credit, I think. This is a joint effort. My 11 co other colleagues on the commission uh, are unified in this. Our colleagues on our Police Jury Association, when we brought these things up, have been unified. Our National Association of County Officials the same way. And we want this to be a joint effort with city, parish, state, and national government, and all citizens within these parishes to participate in this process. Thank you very much. At this time, uh, the conference is over, and you may get with individuals that you would like to have further questions. Or if you would like for us to stay here, you call them up, where everyone can benefit whatever your pleasure. Oh, and uh, Cattle Parish has our annual report on the table, our 2011 annual report. Please get you a copy, and you will see that this is a program or an effort we are just bringing up. We have been consistently working with our militaries and veterans throughout uh, Cattle Parish and, and the city of Shreveport. We've been very cooperative, cooperative as well as Bozier Parish. I'd like to thank our American Legion organization, our Veterans Foreign Wars, and everyone that's here today. Thank you very much.